Hey folks, welcome back. Bitwig Studio 5.1 finally released and I want to use this video to show you how to create a nice additive synthesizer in Bitwig Studio with the new feature of voice stacking going up to 16 voices. Um, I think it's the best implementation of an additive synthesizer yet. And I think it's also the simplest one. So I want to show you this. Um, this is an empty project here, Bitwig Studio 5.1. And we have just one instrument track. We use one polygrid in here. And inside of the polygrid, we create the simplest setup for synthesizer ever. That's just a sine oscillator. It's an AD envelope and it's an audio output. So nothing more. Maybe we use an amplifier here to change the volume a bit to, you know, Bring it a bit down. So this is the easiest setup for a synthesizer. I think it's also already the default preset for for the grid, if I'm not wrong. So it's a monophonic sine synthesizer. So how do we create now an additive synthesizer? Well, first up, we need to switch the grid into voice stacking. So we have one voice stack here at the moment, but we need to have 16 because we want to have 16 partials. So now um, this one here plays 16 times because that's why it's so loud, because we played the 16 times at the same time with the same frequency. So uh, we have to change that. We need to use here a step modulator. And the step modulator already has 16 steps, which is perfect. It's exactly what we need. And we switch here the um, timing to hold. So nothing plays, right? If you hit play here, the step modulator basically stays in place. Perfect. Now we need to use, uh, oh yeah, we need to switch here actually this step modulator into per voice mode on the left side. That's very important actually, because we need this per voice. Um, then we need another modulator, a stack spread modulator here, going from zero to one, right? And with this, we modulate inside of the step modulator here, this phase modulation amount by exactly one. And you can see now every, every step in the sequencer here is white, which means um, everything is correct. Uh, we changed basically here for each voice um, the phase modulation amount. And then uh, we can use this here to change something inside of this patch. Uh, for each voice differently. So now with this here, we want to change the pitch. So we want to have for each voice, so we have 16 voices and for each voice, we are want to have a different frequency. So each voice plays a different frequency with the oscillator, right? And instead of using here this pitch offset, we use the ratio and we go up here to uh, 36. So it's basically uh, 36 to one which means we can now dial in here for each voice different ratio. The first uh, frequency here is zero, uh, which means we have just one one. So it's the root or the fundamental. And then we can slightly go up in frequency the higher we get with the voices. It sounds like this. It sounds a bit ugly because each partial at the moment is still the same loudness, but we changed this soon. So we call this here pitch or let's say um, ratio and we just duplicate this and we call this here um, volume. Okay. And now we want to change the volume for each partial and we can do this by just utilizing here amplify, pull this down and then maybe modulate this here to the max volume of, let's, let's say this. So now we can say uh, the first uh, fundamental frequency, which is one, one, right? It's zero here. This one should be the loudest because it's the, the fundamental, the root note or the root frequency. And then we go slightly down in volume. Now it sounds like this. Something like this. And basically that's, that's already it. That's a nice, um, additive synthesizer you can use. You can dial in here also the text settings differently. So 
So we can change the pitch and the ratio for each partial, and we can change the volume for each partial. Um, but we can do more, of course. We can say we want to change the decay setting here for each partial differently. So we call this decay, bring this down here, and modulate here. And now we can say the root, the partial order, the, the fundamental frequency has the longest decay, right? And then the higher we get, um, the less decay we have. Now it sounds already like a plucked string. So now at the moment it's still a monophonic synthesizer because we only use voice stacking. We can now use here voices and can say we want to have 10 voices. So now it's polyphonic. So we can play this now with multiple keys at the same time, or we can play chords with this. It's maybe still too loud here. Well, that sounds pretty nice. Um, okay, another thing we can do now is we can change the face. Um, if you are familiar with Serum or with the partial editor in Serum, you can change the face uh, per uh, partial. So we say we want to have a constant here, constant of one, and then we duplicate this. We can say this is the face, and now we can rotate here basically the face for each partial differently and get different sound. Um, we also can say we want to change the skew setting here to get different sounds. Maybe not the best idea, but we can do it. So you can bring in a meta more metallic sound here in the higher partials with this. So this could be an idea. Um, what else can we do? Oh yeah, we can bring in velocity. So there's a velo mold. That's how it's, how it's called. And it's basically just a volume change. And the volume change is based on the velocity um, you're using for your current note. So if you pull this down, um, velocity has no effect. It's basically just the same volume for each key press. And if you bring this all the way up, you need to press the keys pretty hard on the keyboard to bring it to the max volume. Okay. And because this is now here the same setting for each partial, we can of course use here again a step modulator, call this velocity, velocity, and change this for each partial differently. So we can say um, the lower partials are not that sensitive, but the higher partials are sensitive to velocity. Um, let's bring this more up here. Okay, so you can play around with this idea here, right? You can extend this to all kinds of parameters. Um, you can use it for the tuning here. That's also something I did lately. Um, so maybe activate this. So here, this is basically the frequency offset for the left and the right channel. So we have a different pitch for the sine oscillator on the left and the right channel. So it makes it more stereo. So we can call this here the tune. Then bring this here up to certain frequency, maybe 16. They can change now here the frequency offset for each partial.
But it gets a different sound here and there. So the best part about all of this is that these step modulators are actually persistent. So when you save this as a preset in the current state, you can load it perfectly fine uh, again the next time and it sounds exactly the same. You can also use this inside of a project, save it as a project and next time you load this project it's, it sounds exactly the same. Um, you can utilize here let's say at the randomize button and for, for everything but I think that the most drastic change is of course when you change the pitch ratio settings here and the volume and maybe decay. That's where it sounds the st or where it changes the sounds the most, right? Um, so let's try this. So we change your pitch ratio. It sounds like a bell or metallic sound. Most of the times you want to have the volume here decrease a bit with the higher partials, but you can also try out drastic changes like this. So it gives you all kinds of bell sounds, probably also off pitch because you change here the root or the fundamental frequency uh, to something, but you can always bring this down here, the first partial and maybe the second partial down to zero, so you have like a root or a, um, yeah, a correct tuning for the sound. Something like this, right? And maybe also try to bring up here the frequency, uh, the, the, the volume for these uh, partials. And yes, this is pretty uh, CPU intensive. You can see we have here a lot of voices at the moment. You can see it goes slowly down because we have the high decay settings. So you need to be aware of that. So maybe bring this a bit more down here so the voices um, fade out and faster. Okay. Um, so this is just an idea and uh, easy setup for you that you can replicate easily in Bitwig. You can also exchange here the AD for maybe an ADSR or maybe a segments or curves modulator or whatever. You can exchange this here for wavetable oscillator if you want to. Um, so you can change this up in all kinds of different directions. What I did uh, lately is to use this plug sound actually for reverb sounds. I really liked um, to use, what's the name of this? Um, I, I always forget the name of the synthesizer. I use some reactor synths for that. Um, so let's say I put here Valhalla reverb on that. We can basically make out of this plug sound a nice pet sound. So we use here a preset. Let's, uh, let's say here this Leo maximalism. Okay, so then you can, let's say, use a pause stretch here, which is just a buffer, recording buffer. And then record some uh, some sounds. So let's say uh, we open this up here and we use a root note. This one here. And the fifth. And the fourth. Right, and then we play between these notes. And then we change up here the ratio settings while we are recording. So let's try this.
So we get some different sounds out of this, and because we have this reverb and we put, put this here into the buffer, we can just hit play and we have some kind of drone running here. We can change up here the delay. Something like this. Now we can also pitch this down here by minus 12. So you can, uh, you know, create sounds with this on the fly. Maybe you do a live stream or um, live set or whatever and you need some different sounds. You just hit this randomized button here and then, you know, pull these two down to have a fundamental. So it's the easiest and simplest additive synthesizer you can do inside of Bitwig Studio, at least what I know of. And the big benefit is, like I said, it's persistent. You can save it as a preset. You can save it to your project. And it's even easy to set up. You even don't need to, you know, make a preset for that. You just, you just can create it on the fly. It's not that, that hard to do. And it has some similarities with Ableton Live's operator. It works kind of in the same way. Um, it's maybe not that CPU friendly, um, but yeah, it, it works and it's a nice idea to create uh, random sounds by just hitting yeah, the dice button. Would be actually nice if you could use here a button, right, and call this maybe randomize and map this here to all dice buttons on each of these step modulators, but it's not possible. I mean, I'm getting used to it, but would be nice to have. So um, this is my idea for an additive synthesizer. Oh yeah, also important, you can exchange the sign oscillator here for, let's say, an SVF, right? Um, and then basically do the same thing and use an audio input here, something like this, and then uh, switch this here to um, convert to FX grid. And then more or less, this is now a resonator that you can play with the keyboard, right? So you put some noises in there and then everything goes here through a bandpass. You increase the resonance and then you have more or less like resonator that's polyphonic and um, yeah, additive. So that's my idea for the setup um, for this video. Leave a like if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me some comments if you have some questions and I probably also put this here onto my Patreon where you can download it and um, it's also not hard to replicate so you don't need to subscribe actually but if you want I'm not mad. So thanks for watching, see you in the next video, bye.